Okay then, for a start today, set up guide for enhancing your Wii games using Dolphin Emulator for Windows PC. If you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide like this one today. And it also helps my channel a lot too. So for the past couple of days, I've released PlayStation 1 using Duck Station, PlayStation 2 with PCSX2. And also, yesterday I've uploaded video enhancements with GameCube using Dolphin Emulator. So today I'm going to be doing Wii using Dolphin Emulator. Now I'm using the latest version of Dolphin, I'll leave the link in my description. And as we can see, I've got a game here ready to go. But what we're going to do is take a look at graphics settings first. So we go to the graphics tab. Now the first thing you're going to find here is general. Backend is very important. If you get a black display when your game should be playing, then drop this down and it's likely going to be one of these just here, mainly Vulkan and OpenGL. Most games for me use Vulkan and it works fine. Next up, we got Adapter. Now just make sure if you've got a graphics card like you can see just here, make sure this one is selected. Next up, we got Aspect Ratio. I'm going to put this one to Auto. By putting this to 16 by 9 in some cases, it's going to stretch our games. Next up, what we're going to do is check VSync. What VSync does is takes away screen tear. And of course, we as a plentitude of 3D games. So screen tear means when you're playing a game, you'll see a little line flick across the screen. So by enabling VSync, that's going to disable that from happening. Another thing we need to check is, of course, start in full screen mode. If we check this, that means every time we boot up a Wii game, normally, by default, this would open up in window mode. Instead, we're going to open this with full screen. So next up, we're going to go over to enhancements. Internal resolution is where you can really make your Wii games look amazing. So if we go on to internal resolution, it's going to be set to auto or native. As we can see, auto here is going to select native. 640 by 528 now of course this is going to be the original resolution of wii games which even in its day looked really bad in comparison to playstation 3 or xbox 360 which was of course in the same generation now from here we can actually go up to 8k if we wanted to just be mindful then that you do need to have a fairly good computer even if you want to take this up to around 4k 8K in most cases is going to make the game lag and a lot of games won't boot at all. So even if you can get this to go to 1080p or 1440p, it's a massive improvement over 640 by 528. So what I'm going to do is actually set this at three times native, which is 1080p. Next up, we got anti-aliasing and what this does is actually takes away jagged edges on our gameplay. So we got objects being displayed on screen and you'll notice that things being round or supposed to be round don't actually look round, but instead they got jagged edges. If we apply anti-aliasing two times MSAA or even two times SAAA, this will then reduce that from happening and it will give things more of a round, almost a blur on the edges of objects in your games so by default this is going to be set to none if we can just make this go to two times msaa or even two times saa it's going to be a massive improvement if i just put this one onto four times and check this one out next option we got is texture filtering now this is literally what it says if we enable texture filtering what this is going to do is make textures in the game look so much better. It's going to add more definition. So rather than a patch of grass, for example, looking like a big mess of blur, if we actually apply texture filtering, something like two times anastrophic or four times, the definition and the clarity will be obvious when we actually use one of these. So I'm going to just put this on the two times. Next up, we got post processing. Now, post-processing can actually make our games look good or bad. What this does is actually turns our games into something completely different. So, for example, if I apply 16-bit, Wii games would look like something from the 16-bit console generation. Uh, Sega Mega Drive, Sega Genesis, or Super Nintendo, or something along those lines. If we put it to 32-bit, then the games are going to look more like PlayStation 1 games or Sega Saturn games. And you've got lots of different options just here under post-processing effects, uh, such as randomly spooky and sketchy. But really, I'm going to just leave this off 
Next thing we're going to check is disable fog. Now, by disabling fog, what this is going to do is, like it says just here, it's going to make distant objects more visible. So in older games, your distance is normally blurred out or it's black and you can't see very far. Or if you can see things, then it's going to be not too detailed. So if we actually check disable fog, those background objects in the distance are going to become a little bit better to see. Now we've got HDR post processing. So if you're using an HDR display, if you just check this and then if we go to configure, so if we go down to HDR paper white nits and you've got HDR screen, then obviously we can turn paper white nits up or we can turn it down to heighten or lower the whiteness and the brightness of the screen. So I'll leave that up to you. So what I'm gonna do for now is just go down to close and I'm actually gonna boot up Klonoa. And as we can see, Klonoa looks absolutely superb with 1080p in internal resolution and annualizing applied. So we can attempt to boost this up again if we go back to graphics. And this time, internal resolution, I'm going to bump this up to 1440p. So my advice is, in terms of upscaling older games like this, do things in increments. So like I've just done, if you find those settings are working for you, work option by option. Now, obviously, internal resolution, anti-aliasing and texture filtering are really going to take a bite out of your hardware. So like I say, do these in increments step by step. I'm going to take the biscuit a little bit and actually put texture filter in to four times along with my 1440p internal resolution. So if I boot the game up again, we'll see then if the game begins to lag. And as we can see, there's absolutely no problems with lag at all. So this is what I'm saying. We need to do this in increments. So if I go back to graphics again, this time I'm going to put anti-aliasing up again to eight times MSAA. And I'm also going to use texture filtering at eight times anastrophic. So like I say, just a simple process of testing what works and what doesn't. So if I then open up Klonoa again, And again, the game's running absolutely fine. So this time, because everything's running so fine for this game and there's no lag, I'm going to just go back to graphics again. And this time, I'm going to bump up internal resolution to 4K and see how well this performs. Wahoo!
And as we can see from that gameplay, because I increased the internal resolution, it's then beginning to lag. So I've literally found my weak point just here for this game. So if I just keep this game running at four times native, and eight times MSA works fine with this setting, as well as eight times anastrophic, and that's it. Using this combination by using things in increments like I've showed, we can then find out what works best for our computers. And whilst I'm on this video, I'm also going to show you how to quickly change the interface. If we go up to configure, we're going to go to interface. And from here, if we go to theme, we can actually make the theme of the interface look different. So, for example, clean blue and style. I'm going to put this as dark and go down to close. And there we go. So very quickly, I just had to get that one in there. And that's it for today's Wii and Dolphin video enhancement guide. So like I've been saying throughout the video, it's literally about increments. So start off with particular settings. And once you find the spot which works, then do what I did and just gradually move upwards. At some point, your game will start lagging. And then it's a time to switch back to the original settings you had. So in my case with Klonoa, we could see that 1440p with a couple of upper settings that I used was perfect. So anyways, check out my PS1, PS2 and GameCube video enhancement guides I've uploaded for the last couple of days. And also hit notifications and subscribe if you like. Today's video really helps my channel out a lot. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.